There are two basic approaches that we're going to be looking at to calculating GDP, the expenditure approach and the income approach. The expenditure approach looks at expenditures or how much money is spent in buying GDP. Those expenditures are broken down into four categories, which we'll get more into in a moment, consumption, investment, government spending, and then exports. The income approach looks at the income derived from the production of GDP. Income is broken down into five categories, wages, rents, interest, profits, and statistical adjustments. These two approaches should both equal GDP. To calculate GDP using the expenditure approach, we add up all the spending on final goods and services that has taken place during the year. We break the spending down into four basic categories, consumption spending, investment spending, government spending, and net export spending. Beginning with consumption, think of this as the spending by individuals and families. Consumption is broken down into three categories, durable goods, non-durable goods, and services. Durable goods are things like cars and refrigerators. These are goods that are expected to last for at least three years. Non-durable goods are things like groceries and other consumable items. They're expected to last less than three years. Services include expenditures for doctors, lawyers, mechanics, etc. Investment spending is spending by the business side. Don't get confused by the use of the word investment. We're not talking about financial investments like IRAs, etc. This category includes any business spending on production facilities, including machinery and computers. The construction category also includes residential construction because apartment buildings and homes can earn income when they're rented or leased. Owner-occupied homes are treated as investment because they could be rented. Finally, increases in inventories are considered to be investment because they're considered unsold output. For economists, all new output that is not consumed is, by definition, capital. So an increase in inventories, even if it's temporary, represents an addition to the stock of capital goods, and so it's considered to be an investment expenditure. Again, investment does not include the transfer of paper assets, things like bonds and stocks. It also will not include the resale of any homes because they're transfers of existing assets. Finally, economists also make a distinction between investment that represents purely new production and investment spending that is simply replacing broken or worn out capital. Net private domestic investment includes only the investment that is in the form of new added capital. It's calculated by subtracting depreciation from our gross investment figure. Depreciation is the figure we put to the amount of capital that is replacing pre-existing capital. Government purchases include expenditures by all levels of government, federal, state, and local. They're generally broken down into two categories, expenditures related to providing public services, things like public health programs, and expenditures related to social capital, such as for schools and highways. Government purchases do not include government transfer payments because they're not related to current production. Net exports represents the spending on U.S. products by foreigners. Remember, GDP is a geographic measure, and since the goods are produced within the borders of the country, it doesn't matter who buys them. But at the same time, we do know that Americans spend a significant amount of money on imports, which are produced abroad. Now that spending should show up in some other country's GDP, not ours. So we have to subtract the value of imports from U.S. spending to avoid overstating the total production of the United States. So we use this measure known as net exports, which is simply calculated by taking exports and subtracting imports. If imports are greater than exports, then net exports will be a negative number. So to put it all together, to calculate GDP using the expenditure approach, we add consumption plus investment plus government purchases plus net exports. And that gives us our little equation that we show here, C plus I plus G plus net exports. If I were you, I would go ahead and commit that one to memory because we're going to use that a lot. If you're more of a visual learner, um, here's a, a more visual display of the expenditure approach as it relates to GDP. You see our four categories there, consumption, investment, government purchases, and net exports. 
And then all the subcategories there. Within consumption, we've got durable goods, non-durable goods and services. With investment, we've got our fixed investment, which we divided into purchases of new capital goods and purchases of new residential housing and our inventory investment. Government purchases broken down into federal, state, and local. And net exports being shown as exports minus imports. Finally, here's a look at the components of GDP, um, some data from 2012. It's kind of interesting to look at this because it gives us a real sense of the different categories. Obviously, we see here that consumption um, is by far the largest component of GDP. Um, and we can see that within consumption spending, um, spending on services is more than spending on durable and non-durable goods combined. In fact, it's about twice or a little over twice um, the combination or right at twice the combination of those two things. Um, it's a modern trend. Uh, we started to see production shifting away from the production of goods to the production of services. And one of the reasons this is occurring is the aging of the population. Um, that's causing the demand for services, things like medical care and financial planning, to increase faster than the demand for goods. Looking at the investment category, we can see that business fixed investment is the largest component of investment spending. And this component does tend to be the most volatile of all the categories of spending. In fact, a decline in business fixed investment played a large role in the 2007 to 2009 recession. Looking at government purchases, does it surprise you at all to see that purchases by state and local governments outweigh purchases by the federal government? Most people consider federal, the federal government to really be uh, the big player in terms of spending. But really what's going on here uh, is that most basic government services, things like education and law enforcement, occur at the state and local levels. Now we're going to look more at, at exports and imports later in the course. But for now, we just need to recognize that when imports are greater than exports, as they were in 2012, we're going to have a negative net exports. And in fact, our net exports in 2012 was a negative $547 billion.